AIDS, Toy Story, and JFK are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is November 22nd, 2022. It is the 326th day of the year. We got 39 days left in 2022. It is the 47th Tuesday in the 47th week in the 62nd day of fall. 29 days left until winter. Today is Go For A Ride Day. Go For A Ride Day is celebrated on November 22nd and it urges us to get up, get out, and do something different. Do you ever feel like you're tired of your laptop, phone, tablet screens? More and more people are satisfied with sitting at home and looking at screens instead of getting out. And that's what today's kind of trying to break us away from. They want you to get out, do something else, explore your city, explore your state, something like that, just go for a ride. The website says, make today the day you set your spirit free. Enjoy your wanderlust in whatever mode of transportation suits you best. Bike, boat, car, skateboard, sleigh, pogo stick. It doesn't matter what you choose, just get up and get out. All right, let's see what else November 22nd has given us. 1935, the China Clipper inaugurates the first commercial Trans-Pacific Air Service connecting Alameda, California with Manila. 1940, World War II, following the initial Italian invasion, Greek troops counterattack into Italian-occupied Albania. 1942, World War II, the Battle of Stalingrad. General Frederick Polson sends Adolf Hitler a telegram saying that the German Sixth Army is surrounded. 1942. So this should have been, at least in the German eyes, a, a walk in the park. They thought they'd just roll into Stalingrad, take it over, and that would be that. It was nothing near that. In the summer of 1942, the German forces had gotten to the doorstep of Stalingrad, basically. This kicked the entire city of Stalingrad into gear. Nobody was immune from fighting in this war. Kids and women dug trenches throughout the city. Women served on machine gun crews and as sniper scouts. If you could walk, you had something to do to defend this city. If you've ever been in the military, you know anything about the military. Fighting in a city is one of the most dangerous things that can happen. Too many windows, doorways, alleyways, sewers. Someone could always be there to shoot you. And that's exactly what happened to the Germans. One of the Soviets' best weapon was the sniper. Germans came rolling in with all their armored vehicles and infantry supporting them, and they were continually picked off by snipers that would kill one person then disappear into the sewer system, things like that. As the Germans advanced into the city, the Soviets kept ferrying new troops across the Volga into Stalingrad. Now, since July, when it became apparent that the Germans were heading to Stalingrad, Stalin issued Order Number 227. It's got a whole bunch of words in there, but really what the order boiled down to was something he said in it. Not one step backwards. Basically, defend Stalingrad to the last man or woman in this case. As winter approached, this sort of slowed down the German army's biggest tactical advantage. Their tanks and armored vehicles, it was really hard for them to operate in the cold weather. The cold weather also started affecting the German troops. The Soviets were ready for it. They had quilted jackets, fur hats. German military didn't have much of that. And eventually they became surrounded in November of 1942. The German generals in Stalingrad said they wanted to retreat and they asked Hitler if they could and he said no. He would resupply them and send reinforcements. So a couple problems here. The reinforcements ran into problems with Winter II and could never get to the surrounded 6th Army. And the air supplies, only a fraction made it. Most of the planes were shot down or they actually dropped supplies to the Soviets. It was just a fiasco. Finally, in February of 1943, the last German soldiers surrendered. 1955, the Soviet Union launches RDS-37, a 1.6 megaton two-stage hydrogen bomb designed by Andrei Sakharov. 1963, U.S. President John F. Kennedy is assassinated and Texas Governor John Connolly is seriously wounded by Lee Harvey Oswald, who also kills Dallas Police Officer J.D. Tippett after fleeing the scene. U.S. Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson is sworn in as the 36th President of the United States afterwards. We've covered that extensively in past videos, so that's why it's not your deep dive today. 1977, British Airways starts regular London to New York supersonic Concorde service. I was always fascinated with that plane. I wanted to go on it. Sadly, they don't, you know, they discontinued, I think, early 2000s, late 90s. But it was such a neat plane. I don't know why they stopped it. 
1988 in Palmdale, California, the first prototype B-2 Spirit stealth bomber is revealed. So flash forward, the U.S. military knew about the bomber in 1989 when we invaded Panama. We had no idea about the uh, stealth fighter. It started whipping around the battlefield and people started shooting at it like Americans. We didn't know what it was. 1995's Toy Story is released. The first feature length film created completely using computer generated imagery. That's amazing. And it was mind blowing. If you remember back in the early 90s or mid 90s when Pixar started coming out with even their short films, you were like, how is this possible? What kind of magic do they have going on over there? I don't watch a lot of kids movies. I mean, since I was a kid, but Toy Story I was just amazed. 2003, Baghdad, the DHL attempted shootdown incident. Shortly after takeoff, a DHL Express cargo plane is struck on the left wing by a surface to air missile and forced to land. Movies released on November 22nd, 2013, The Dallas Buyers Club. This was a good movie. It starred Matthew McConaughey, Jared Leto, Leto, whatever his name is, Jennifer Gardner, Steve Zahn, Griffin Dunn. Very good movie. It's based on a true story. It's a biographical drama starring Matthew McConaughey as hustler Ron Woodruff, the man who smuggled unapproved pharmaceutical drugs into Texas for AIDS treatment after being diagnosed with the disease himself. McConaughey and Leto won Academy Awards in the categories of Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor for their performances in this movie. This was only the fifth movie ever to win both awards. It's a sad movie. It is really, really sad. And to find out that it's true, uh, it's, you know, makes it even a little more depressing. This is one of the first mainstream movies that kind of shed some light on the treatment and what the struggles were for the gay community and, I mean, just the normal community as AIDS became a thing. Born on November 22nd, 1940, Terry Gillum, member of the Monty Python comedy troupe who wrote and co-directed The Holy Grail and wrote the scripts for The Meaning of Life and Life of Brian. Outside of Monty Python, he has directed films like Brazil, 12 Monkeys, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which was hysterical. He's an animator. Actually, if you ever watch any Monty Python things in between scenes or whatever, they always have some kind of weird animation. He's the one that did all that. He is the only Monty Python member not born in Britain. He was naturalized into British citizenship in 1968, and in 2006, he renounced his American citizenship. Died on November 22nd.